afternoon. Today we're going to be looking at plant inflorescences, all the flowers and the different flower types. And this is quite a key one in terms of plant identification. And you can see behind me we have a beautiful Mahonia and we have a long flower. And this is called a Racine. And there are two key words that we need to remember when we're looking at flowers. One is that the main stalk that the flower is born on is called a peduncle. And if it's got little tiny stalks off the peduncle, they're called pedicels. So we're going to have a look at uh, several different flower inflorescences. Um, see how you get on. There'll be, a quiz, there'll be a quiz at the end, so see how you get on with that. Don't forget to subscribe and click the like button. There are several videos in this series, so why not have a look at them all and build your plant identification knowledge up so you can go out and impress everyone around you. So let's get stuck into plant inflorescences. So this first inflorescence is called a spike because the flowers are directly born on the peduncle. So there's no extra flower stalks. And you can see here's a good example of a spike. It's the Persicaria. It's Persicaria bistorta superbum. And the flowers are directly on the peduncle. Next one we're going to look at is the Racine. And the Racine is where you've got the peduncle, the main stalk, and there's little pedicels. And on the end of the pedicels are the flowers. And we've got some examples here. For example, the Laburnum is a very good example of a Racine. And the Aloe is a very good example of a Racine. The next one we're going to look at is a panicle. And in this one, you have the peduncle, but off the peduncle we have pedicels, but they don't just split once, they split a second time. So that makes a panicle. And there are lots of, again, lovely examples of panicles. A good example of a panicle is the Hydrangea paniculata, branched twice on the panicle. The next one we're going to look at is the corym. This is where it's got kind of quite a flattened structure. So if you looked at it, the flower looks quite flattened. And generally speaking, the outer pedicels with the flowers on open before the inner ones. And that's what makes a corym. And again, there's some lovely examples of corymms. Uh, Achillea. And you can see it's quite a flattened structure. It's quite difficult to tell when which of the flowers open first. And then we've got a lovely uh, viburnum here, viburnum placatum. This could be Mauritiae or Lanarth, one of those, in that the outer flowers open before the inner ones. Okay, you can actually get compound corymbs as well where they split again. But generally speaking, the structure is quite flattened. Then we have the sign which can be flattened also, but often they curl to one side. And generally speaking, the uh, middle flowers open before the outer ones on a cyme. The other thing about a cyme is that the lateral branches all form a flower. It's sympodial, so the lateral branches increase the height of the overall plant. An example of a cyme is, of course, the allium. Freesias and other plants similar are also good examples of cymes. Next we're looking at is an umbel. And you can see here that all the pedicels come from the same point on the peduncle. And they're all a sort of a similar length on the umbel. There is what's called a compound umbel where they branch again. And you can see again those little tiny extra pedicels again are the same length coming off the first pedicel. Examples include the giant hogweed and angelica. On the thirst, you can see that you've got a central point, a central flower, but if you go just below that, there are two sets of pedicels which are parallel and they move in sort of like mirror one another and have a flower on the ends of those. So that's sometimes described as a thirst. There are lots of different kinds of thirst. And an example of uh, this one here is the stitchwort. And you can see just below the top 
flower that there's branches coming off at the same angle ending in a flower. The next one we have is the Capitulum. You can see here this is typical of Asteraceae where you've got a complete sort of uh, flower head made up of disc florets and ray florets um, in a slight arc. So Capitulum is like a head, if you like, consisting of many sort of very uh, no-stalked flowers all bunched together. Um, but in the case of Asteraceae, every one of those florets, so every floret has got male and female on each one. And there's some good examples of Capitulums like the Aster. On this one, you can see the Capitulum very clearly. It's got a cutaway and you can see the female flowers at the base of them is the male and what's called a pappus, which will inevitably help it to disperse in the future. So you've got the the ray florets there that on the outside, every one a potential new seed from the base of those. And in the middle, we have the disc florets. And then finally, we're just going to have a look at a couple of things. Here's an example of a Verti Solaster. This is on a Lamium galeobdulum, Luteum, Yellow Archangel, where the flowers go all the way around. And of course, let's not forget that if you've got a flower on its own, like a lot of flowers are, that is called a solitary flower. Well, I hope you found that useful. Now we're going to do a little test. So what I've got is I've just got about nine different flower heads. I want you to see how many you can identify. Uh, I'll wait a couple of seconds, see if you can identify what type of inflorescence it is, and then I'll put the answer up there. enjoyed that and you've got something out of the different types of flowers and hopefully it will help your plant identification and every time you see when you can just test yourself to see is it a spike is it a raceme a panicle a corym an umbel or a thurse and uh, see how you get on as you do this over the next few weeks but it will help your plant identification so see you next time